con assignment, use Pythagorean theorem to find area. So if you recall, the formula for the area of a triangle That's going to be one half times the base times the height. Okay. Remember that the base and the height are always perpendicular to each other. That means that the base and the height will be at a, a right angle to each other. Okay. So make sure the lengths that you use for base and height make a right angle with each other. Now here they want us to find the area of the triangle shown below. And you can see we have an isosceles triangle, okay? We have two sides congruent. All right, each of these side lengths are five units. So when you have an isosceles triangle, you can draw a line segment down the middle that's in between the two congruent sides, okay? You have to start at the vertex and draw a line down the middle that's in between the two congruent sides. And if you make it perpendicular to the base, you make it have a right angle to this base here, it is going to bisect the base, okay? So if this entire base is eight, then each portion of the base is going to be half of eight, which is four, okay? So we have a four, un four units there, and four units there, all right? Now, we have the base here, but we need to find the height right here. So we need to use Pythagorean theorem to do that. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? a, b, and c are the side lengths of the triangle, and c is always the hypotenuse. So we're going to look at this triangle, this half right here, this right triangle on the right-hand side. So C is always the hypotenuse. We're going to go across from the right angle to the side, okay, and that's going to be C. And the other two sides, it doesn't matter which is which, we'll call them A and B. So this portion right here, that's four, we'll call that A. And this portion right here, we're going to call that B. All right, so now we can use the formula. A squared is gonna be four squared. B squared, we don't know B, so it's just B squared. And C squared is going to be five squared. Okay, four squared is 16. And five squared is 25. Subtracting 16 from both sides. The 16s cancel. Bring down your B squared. 25 minus 16 equals 9. Okay, in order to solve for B, just take the square root of both sides. Square root of B squared is just B. Square root of 9 is just 3. Okay, we don't need negative three because we're dealing with side lengths. So now we have B equals three. I'm going to fill that in on the triangle. All right, B equals three. And now we can solve for the area of this triangle. All right. I'll clean it up a little bit so you can see it better. So we can solve for the area of this triangle. We said it's one half base times height. Base and the height are perpendicular to each other. All right, so you can see that right here. The base is eight. And the height H right here that's three okay one half times eight is four and then four times three is twelve so that's your final answer okay you just enter that in the box
Okay, we did not have units, but when we multiply base times height, the units become squared. That's why it says units squared. All right, so just remember when you have an isosceles triangle, you can draw the height right down the middle in between the two sides that are congruent. Make it perpendicular to the base and it bisects the base. It cuts it in half. Okay, so here we have a trapezoid. All right. And the formula for the area of a trapezoid, the way I like to remember it, it's the average of the two bases. So B1 plus B2 divided by 2. Okay, remember average, you add them and divide, add two, average of two numbers, you add them and divide by two. So it's the average of the two bases times the height. Okay, so we need to find this length right here. Now you can see right here, we have a right triangle. Okay, so we're just going to deal with the right triangle first. Okay. And we use Pythagorean theorem again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right. And we said before, c is always the hypotenuse, so I'm going to go across from my, my right angle and make that equal to c. Okay, and the other two sides, it doesn't matter which is a or b. So this one right here, we'll call it b. And this one right here, this length right here, we'll call that A. So A squared is going to be 12 squared. B squared, we don't know B, so it's, B, it's just B squared. C squared is going to be 15 squared. All right, 12 times 12 is 144 plus B squared. And 15 times 15 is 225. All right, subtracting 144 from both sides. The 144 is cancel. And B squared is going to equal, let me see, 5 minus 4 is 1, 12 minus 81. All right, solving for B, we take the square root of both sides. And B equals 9. Okay, so I'm going to take that and fill it in on my triangle. So this length here is 9. Okay, now we need the whole side length of the trapezoid, okay? If this here is 2... And we can see this is a rectangle, right? Right angle, right angle, right angle. This would have to be a right angle. It's a rectangle. So if this length is two, this length is also going to be two. Okay? That means the whole thing is going to be nine plus two, which is 11. Okay, so this entire side length is 11. Now, for the area of the trapezoid, the bases of the trapezoid are the sides that are parallel to each other. Okay, so we have, th this is not a side of the trapezoid, all right? We have this and this. Those are the two parallel sides of the trapezoid. So those are the bases, B1 and B2, all right? So we have 2 plus 11. This whole side is 11. And that's divided by 2. And that whole thing is times the height. Remember, base and the height are perpendicular. So we have this right here. The height for the trapezoid is the perpendicular distance between the two bases. So the height is 12. Okay, so 2 plus 11, that's going to be 13 divided by 2 times 12. 
okay? And we can cancel top and bottom. 12 divided by 2 is just 6. And 13 times 6 is going to be 78. All right, just in case you didn't catch that, this 12 is multiplied by the fraction. The 12 is the same thing as 12 over 1. Okay, so we're mul basically multiplying fractions, and you can cancel top and bottom. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and then 13 times 6 is 78. All right. So you just enter that number in the box, and there weren't any units. It's just units squared. Okay, here we have an ordinary right triangle. So this one's not bad. All right. So area of a triangle. We said before it's one-half base times height. All right, and for a right triangle, the base and the height are actually side lengths, okay? Remember, we said the base and the height are always perpendicular to each other. So we'll make this the height, okay? I'll just call it H, and this will be the base, all right? And we need Pythagorean theorem to find the height. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C is always the hypotenuse, so you go to the right angle and go to the side length. That's across from that right angle. That is going to be C. All right, A and B are the other sides. Doesn't matter which is which. We'll call the 5B. We'll call the H A. All right. I, I didn't have to make it H. I could have just left it as A. Doesn't matter. All right. But A, since we said H is A, A squared is going to be H squared. B squared is going to be 5 squared. And C squared is going to be 13 squared. 5 squared is 25. 13 squared is 169. Okay, subtracting 25 on both. The 25 minus 25 cancels. We bring down the H squared. 169 minus 25 is 144. Taking the square root of both sides. Square root of H squared is H. Square root of 144 is just 12. So we can fill that in on our, tri on our triangle. Okay, this is a 12 right here. And now we'll just use the area of the triangle formula. One half base. We'll let this be the base, that's five. And the base is perpendicular to the height. So the height is gonna be 12. Okay, whenever you have an even number for the base or the height, distribute the one-half to that number. That makes it easier, okay? Because the order doesn't matter when you're multiplying everything. So one-half of 12 is just 6, and then 6 times 5 is going to be 30. And that goes in the box. Okay, I didn't see one on this exercise, but in case you get a parallelogram where opposite sides are parallel, all right, in case you get one of these, you will see something like this connecting two, the two parallel sides, and it has to be perpendicular to the two parallel sides, okay? So that would be your height, and then either of the sides that's perpendicular to that height will be your base, okay? And for the parallelogram, area of the parallelogram, 
it's just base times height. So that's it. 